The MAX flight simulator experiment was an incredible thing to live through. Imagine that every morning you wake up and your job is to build flight simulator stuff. And also imagine that you don't get paid anything for this job. So it was stressful because I was draining my savings account just to live, just to buy food and pay the mortgage. Uh, and I was under pressure uh, to create solutions for this flight simulator that I was building and complete the project. The plan was for the Max flight simulator to generate revenue after it was finished. Then I could repay my savings account, uh, pay for the materials that I built the flight simulator with, uh, and uh, make a living. So, when you're in the middle of a big project like this, how do you keep going? Uh, now, there's no mentors to help you, nobody to coach you. Uh, when you start a small business, they say, get a mentor. Uh, that's great if you're selling real estate or insurance or you're a consultant or an artist, you can find a mentor. If you're building a flight simulator in your basement, you know, they, they love it. They think it's great, but they have no idea what to sell you. So instead of mentors, I had role models. Eight of them. The great eight, I called them. I printed a picture of them and put it in the, uh, in the basement workshop and also in the garage and next to my computer here. These men inspired me to persist. Jimmy Doolittle. Every pilot knows about Doolittle's raid on Tokyo in World War II, but what else do you know about him? In addition to being a world-renowned air race pilot, Jimmy Doolittle was a very innovative man. Prior to World War II, he envisioned a safe way for airplanes to fly in clouds, fog, and darkness with limited view outside of the airplane. The pilots would fly solely by reference to their flight instruments. Jimmy Doolittle helped invent and personally tested in flight gyroscopic flight instruments, the kind that are still in use today in many aircraft. He was a true aviation pioneer. Bert Rutan. Where to start with Bert Rutan? You may know that he and his crew built and flew Spaceship One, the first non governmental spacecraft. Uh, but that crowning achievement came after decades of groundbreaking aircraft design. Uh, Burt pioneered the use of carbon composites for airplanes, including home-built air kit planes. Uh, this carbon fiber material, which is similar to working with fiberglass, but better, uh, allows for airplane designs that are stronger, lighter, and radically different from standard aluminum airframes. Rutan's Voyager was the first airplane to fly completely around the world without stopping or refueling. Peter Diamandis Dr. Diamandis founded the XPRIZE Foundation to encourage technical innovation. The XPRIZE is similar to the Ortig Prize that Charles Lindbergh won by flying from New York to Paris nonstop. But Ortig was a rich hotel baron and Peter Diamandis had to solicit donations for the original $10 million X Prize, and that took years, years to find donors. I can only imagine the persistence and the passion for the cause he must have had to get through that time. He succeeded, and the X Prize became a reality, and it was later won by again Bert Rutan's team and Spaceship One. And you could argue that if there had been no X Prize, then there would be no Spaceship One. Earl Nightingale. I listened to Earl Nightingale's recordings over and over while I was working on the Max Flight Simulator. The Strangest Secret, Lead the Field, even some of the rare direct line recordings. Earl had a deep faith in working towards personal goals regardless of the environment we find ourselves in. 
Earl also warned of the dangers of conformity, uh, the things that happen when a person stops making real decisions and starts just going along with the crowd. Jim Collins, the author of Good to Great and Built to Last. I listened to both of these audiobooks over and over again while working on the project. Uh, Jim Collins and his researchers examined the behaviors of companies and their results spanning decades and discovered certain core principles that were common among excellent companies. I listened to stories about Boeing, Sony, Hewlett Packard, Disney and 3M, Nucor, Gillette, and most importantly I earned I learned that greatness is not a destination. If you don't continue to do great things, you again become average. Napoleon Hill, author of Think and Grow Rich. Hill researched and personally interviewed the successful business tycoons of his time and eventually discovered a number of behavioral similarities among them. This research took 20 years. Most people don't persist with anything for 20 years. I've read Think and Grow Rich several times, which is only partially about money and mostly about setting and achieving your goals. I had an, uh, an abridged recording narrated by Earl Nightingale, and I listened to it repeatedly over and over. See, these were important lessons, and what we're talking about here is changing attitudes changing behaviors, changing habits, and these types of changes require repeated reinforcement, listening to this every day. You can't just listen once and think that you'll learn something. Jeffrey Gittimer, another author. Uh, I own a few of his books on selling and attitude, and actually I've read each book a couple of times at least, and I've made lots of notes. I also received his weekly email newsletter about sales. Now, the number one rule of selling is kick your own ass. So get going, get moving, get working. Don't make excuses. Don't procrastinate. Just do it. I got the idea for videotaping our simulators from one of Jeffrey's books. Uh, years later, ironically, my YouTube channel now has more views than his does, but that's okay. He's the, he's the millionaire, not me. Uh, he's got much wider exposure through his books and newspaper articles and blogs and seminars.